watchOS 10 brings some big and possibly controversial changes to the Apple Watch. In watchOS 10, we got four new watch faces. The first is an animated Snoopy face. The animations are stunning here. Snoopy animates in different ways, including interacting with the hands of the watch and also brings in different props. Woodstock even shows up sometimes. If you like these fun animated watch faces, this is definitely one to try. The other watch face is the palette face. This one uses color and blends with the hands. Personally, this one has a bit too much color for me, and I find it really hard to quickly read the face. But if you do want to try it out, you can use four corner complications with it. Then there is a solar analog watch face. I really like the design of this one, and it's similar to the look of the California face I use. The second hand has this beautiful gradient. Then finally, there is the Nike globe face, which is very athletic. One of the big changes to watchOS 10 is navigation. Apple is trying to simplify navigation on the Apple Watch. First, what used to be the dock now opens Control Center. This will be the thing that takes the most getting used to. The benefit of it being a hardware button though, is now Control Center can be open from anywhere even when you have an app open, which is really nice. What used to be called the dock is now just your recently opened applications, and it's hidden behind a double click of the digital crown. This is going to be the thing that is the hardest for people to discover. Double clicking the digital crown has never done anything before. And in this recent section, you can no longer pin apps. So it really is just the recently used apps on your watch. That is a bit of a bummer because I use that pin feature a lot. But the honeycomb to the rescue. If you single press the digital crown, you get the honeycomb or list view. If you use the honeycomb view, it is now in a list design, meaning there is no more sideways scrolling. It just goes up and down. Apps aren't labeled, but if you know your app icons, this can be a way to see a lot more on the screen than the list view. You can also drag and drop apps to arrange the honeycomb view. I put the apps that I used to have pinned in the dock now at the top of the honeycomb view. On the watch face, you can no longer swipe left or right to jump to other watch faces. You now must long press and swipe over to the selected one. This to me is a regression. When on a watch face, if you scroll up from the bottom, you will get the new widget view. Or scrolling up on the digital crown. Widgets are the big change to watchOS 10. Widgets in watchOS are designed to be glanceable pieces of information, but when you tap on them, they launch the app. To add a widget, long press and select from the list of apps you have on your watch. There are some ones that I really like. Weather is good for quickly seeing the condition and temperature for the next few hours. Shortcuts let you run a shortcut right from the widget. I've been working on one called Action Shortcut that incorporates a few different shortcuts in it. The calendar widget shows your next appointment. Then there's a widget which brings in complications. What's strange is you can only have one of these. I put timer, fitness, and messages complication down there as a quick launcher. There is also some dynamic widgets that will show up at the top of the stack when you are using a particular app. For example, when you're playing music, you'll see the now playing widget. When running a timer, you'll see the timer widget. I really like the dynamic aspect of these. I don't always want the timer widget in my stack, but I definitely want it when I'm running a timer. In the widget editor, select the pin icon to pin a widget to the top of the stack. Now, if you're using a dynamic widget, the dynamic widget will still stay at the top over the pinned widget. I actually really like this. Dynamic widgets like timers or the now playing screen should always appear at the top since they are the most relevant piece of information at that time. After three months of using the beta, I'm still struggling with a few of the changes that were introduced with watchOS 10. I'm slowly getting used to them, but I imagine when users install watchOS 10, it's gonna be a little dramatic. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.